An important measurement in uh, marginal analysis is the average cost. And so we're going to investigate the average cost function. Like most averages, the average cost is the cost of production divided by the number of units. Here we're showing the average cost function uh, as a graph for example 2 from the previous video. We've just taken that function divided by x and then looked at the graph here. And what you'll notice is that there's a point where the average cost starts to go up. It looks like it's around this point right here where all of a sudden now when we get this to the right side of our graph the average cost starts to rise again. And so it's going to be important as we're analyzing these costs to see if we can find out where the average cost for the number of units we make is at a minimum. And so one of the ways we investigate average cost is with the marginal average cost function. The marginal average cost function measures the rate of change of the average cost function with respect to the number of units produced. And before I go any further, let me point out some notation here. This bar on top of the C, that's what we're going to use to denote the average cost. And so when I write C bar, and that's what I'll say, I'll say C bar, I'm talking about the average cost function. When we put the apostrophe on there, as you know, that means we're taking the derivative. And in that case, this is C bar prime, which is the marginal average cost function. So let's try an example. In example 3, the daily total cost for producing portable DV players is given by the function c of x equals 0.0001 x cubed minus 0.08 x squared plus 40x plus 5,000. Notice we've graduated from widgets to DVD players. Our job is to find the average cost function, the marginal average cost function, uh, and then compute uh, the marginal average cost at a production level of 500 and also sketch the graph of that average cost function. Let me just make a note that when it says find the average cost function, we're looking for C bar. When it says find the marginal average cost function, we're looking for C bar prime. Here we're going to plug 500 into C bar prime. And then here, notice we're just going to graph the average cost function. And we'll use a tool to do that. So let's start with letter A where they ask us to find the average cost function, that is C bar. And remember the way you get C bar is you divide C of x by x. So for us, that means we're going to take this top function and divide each term by x. That means the first term would be 0 0.0001 x squared, because x cubed divided by x uh, is x squared. I keep bumping this thing and making marks. Uh, when we divide the second term by x, we get 0 0.08x. 40x divided by x is 40, and 5,000 divided by x is 5,000 over x. But I'm going to write it as 5,000x to the negative 1, because it'll be easier to take the derivative. I can use my power rule that way. So there is the average cost function C bar. Let's take the derivative because we need to find the marginal average cost function in part B. So C bar prime. We're going to use our power rule. So that's 0.0002x minus 0 0.08 plus 0 for the 40 and then minus 5,000 x to the negative 2. You could also write that as 5,000 over x squared. In fact, I'm going to do that right here, just because it makes it a little easier to do our calculations. Actually, I don't know if it's easier. It looks a little different. No negative exponents. Okay. So we have our average cost function, our marginal average cost function, and we're asked to plug in 500 
into the marginal average cost and see what value we get. Well, I've done this calculation. 500 times 0 0.0002 is 0 0.1 uh, minus 0 0.08 and then minus 5,000 divided by 500 squared is 0 0.02. And guess what? This all works out to be zero. Which is interesting. In fact, let's look at the graph of this function, of um, the average cost function, and see what's happening at 500. So part D asks us to graph C bar, which is the average cost function. And we notice that the marginal average cost at 500 was zero. And take a look at what's happening here at uh, a production level of 500. That's the lowest point on the graph. And as we get more into our study of calculus and applications of derivatives, we're going to find out that these minimum values are easy to find and also very important for functions. And that'll do it for this one. Uh, next, we're going to talk about revenue.